If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. So on the whole Kanye West controversy, right? I wanted to talk about something that I really didn't see anybody really bringing up. And it's the fact that the white lives matter slogan right the words that people are able to clearly see and they know and it's it's out there in the public it's owned by two black men white lives matter is trademarked by two black men in an interview with capital b the host civic cipher the arizona-based radio show focused on racial justice revealed that they as of several days ago own the trademark for the phrase that Kanye West has attempted to use in his new Yeezy line. Quote, the way that the law works is either you're owning phrases or it's up for grabs for people to make money off of them. This person who first procured it didn't really love owning it because the purpose was not necessarily to get rich off of it. The purpose was to make sure that other people didn't get rich off of that pain. The radio host explained that the person who acquired the trademark in 2020 purchased it so that it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands and not to make money off of the phrase. But as of October 28th, the owner decided to hand over the trademark to the two black men. Quote, if they were to sell the trademark for whatever amount of money, we could donate that money to a cause that we feel would benefit black people like the NAACP or Black Lives Matter organizations. Because realistically, we cannot stop the shirts from being made right now. We can write cease and desist to people selling these shirts right now, but that is a big monster that requires a team of lawyers and thousands of dollars that we do not have. The acquisition of the trademark comes after Weston Models and Candace Owens paraded with t-shirts during the launch of his easy line. White supremacists such as the KKK and the Aryan Resistance Society have overtaken the Black Lives Matter phrase used by black people protesting police brutality and reframed it. The Anti-Defamation League has categorized the phrase as a hate slogan. Ja also added that West has not reached out to him or his attorneys. Quote, it's hurtful, but it's not something that was unexpected because I know that Kanye has been moving in this direction for some time. I do my best to try to remember the Kanye that I knew in 04 and 05. Josh stated this about West's recent actions. Quote, the Kanye that said George Bush doesn't care about black people. Shortly after the launch, the family of Ahmaud Aubrey, who had his life taken by two white men, denounced West's use of the phrase. So something else that I wanted to touch on is the fact that everybody talked about the back of Kanye's t-shirt, right? That was the main thing that everybody raved about, everybody wants to get angry about, but nobody really showcased the front or really talked about the front, right? And the front had Pope John Paul II, and it stated, Seguiremos te ejemplo, right? Which means we will follow your example. So I decided to do a little bit on pope john paul just to you know understand a little bit of things and i ended up finding a list of apologies by the pope and this is something that is actually pretty interesting pope john paul ii made many apologies during his long reign as pope he apologized to the jews women people convicted by the inquisition muslims killed by the crusaders and almost everyone who has suffered at the hands of the catholic church over the years even before he became the pope he was prominent editor and supporter of the initiatives like the letter of reconciliation of the polish bishops to the german bishops from 1965. As Pope, he officially made public apologies for over 100 of these wrongdoings, including Christians involved in the African slave trade, the 14th of August, 1985, also at various points in the 1990s, the church's roles in the burning at the stakes and the religious wars that followed the Protestant Reformation, May 1995, in the Czech Republic. And in June of 1995, a letter to women, John Paul II stated this, quote, 
Women's dignity has often been acknowledged and their prerogatives misrepresented. They have often been regulated to margins of society and even reduced to servitude. Certainly, it is not an easy task to assign the blame for this, considering that many kinds of cultural conditions, which down to the centuries have shaped ways of thinking and acting. And if objective blame, especially in particular, historical context has belonged to not just a few members of the church for this i'm truly sorry pope john paul ii also stated that the inactivity and the silence of many catholics during the holocaust march 16th of 1998 the commission of religious relations with the jews issued a statement quote we cannot know how many christians in countries occupied or ruled by nazi powers or their allies were horrified at the disappearance of their jewish neighbors and yet were not strong enough to raise their voice in protest for christians this heavy burden of conscience of their brothers and sisters during the second world war must be called to penance so i just wanted to list all this information just because in just in one video um because i feel like a lot of times when we happen to see things on a first take we will just run with that first take um i've done it on a great many a deal of occasions because that's you know and this is just what i do first takes but when you can actually sit down and look at different information and look at it as a larger picture you know you can feel how you feel about it once you actually get way more information um you know as i stated before i'm not trying to change anybody's opinion on anything you can feel exactly how it is that you feel but at least have pretty much a nice amount of information <laughs> while you are directly in your feelings um you know about something at this moment in time and also given the fact of the you know short termness of america this is going to be something that's forgotten pretty soon people will still bring it up here and there but nobody's going to be really trying to really talk about this or hammer it home, you know, like a year from now, two years from now, three, four, five years from now, 10 years from now. Like I said before, people aren't really going to care. People are just really caring about it now because people are so much in their feelings and they have other people leading them to be in their feelings about this. But as what i stated before at the end of the day you can go ahead and do your research if you want to two black men own the trademark for white lives matter that's all i'm saying <laughs> that's all i'm saying um you know at the end of the day how i look at this is that if you have people that are willing to try to come at you in a certain type of way right such as uh the, the, the people who love to throw the whole saying of white lives matter right and, and, and making their own uh definition for it and why it is that they're saying it why not profit directly off of that hate some people will sit up there and say like oh why not just destroy it you can't destroy something that's already out there that's that's impossible to do you would have to be able to brain white people as if you're professor x so destroying it is not going to mean anything because people will just still do what it is that they want to sit up there and do i'll put it to you in a better example some people would in a sense state if you know you are in the ownership of war right nobody really owns war but it's something that is there why not just stop war well if you stop war then people aren't going to be able to profit right and then if you stop the wars then that means that people have to now look at something else right as uh war is a diversion from other things that are going on if you got a war somewhere else in the world then that means that everybody is focused there and they're not focused on the things that they are supposed to be focusing on or the things that are going on locally because everybody is so heightened and so afraid about all of these other things like i said before everything plays a role in a bigger puzzle and it just takes for people to calm down and to take emotions directly out of a situation to finally start to read the writing that is directly on the wall but as i stated before when it comes to black people by the time that black people learn how to read the writing that is on the wall is going to be too late